In Calgary, the violence climbs along with the statistics. There's been a huge spike in shootings in the city. At 63, the number of shootings so far this year has already surpassed last year's total of 54. Disputes over drugs are nothing new, but the use of guns to resolve these disputes has now become the rule instead of the exception. We are deeply concerned by this. So is Ottawa. Shootings there spiked 35% last year from the year before. Police are calling it a mini arms race. But what it is not is a sign of a trend in this country. In fact, Statistics Canada reports between 2009 and 2012, firearm-related violent crime dropped dramatically by 27%. That's 1,800 fewer victims of gun crime in Canada annually. So Canadian cities that are experiencing soaring gun crime are the exception, not the rule. That often means gang on gang violence. And more often than not, says this criminologist, any spike in gun violence can be traced to a local power struggle among criminals. Something's changed about the nature and mix up of the gangs within a community. Gangs are not in them of themselves static entities. In Surrey, a turf war over control of a profitable marijuana trade has resulted in dozens of shootings, even one death. Earlier this summer, the federal government approved 100 new RCMP officers to help break it up. We have not seen what we're seeing right now in decades. In the U.S., rates of gun violence are soaring too. But unlike Canada, it seems to be happening just about everywhere in the country. And there's no question there are more guns on the streets south of the border. We're going to shooting scenes now where you've got more and more victims being shot. You've got more uh, uh, spent rounds being collected as evidence. No doubt it's a bigger, more complex crime problem in the U.S. But this week, police chiefs from across Canada met with their U.S. counterparts to discuss gun violence and how to turn it around. Carolyn Dunn, CBC News, Calgary.